Firepower finally increases as we are moving into the shotguns. In this game, however, there happens to be only one, and that is the W870. Now let's check it out in-game. 4 round capacity, 12 gauge pump action shotgun. Its sturdy steel action makes this popular model reliable and easy to control. Alright, so the location of the W870 shotgun is here in the safety deposit room. You have to acquire the weapons locker key card first, which is found in the art room on the second floor. If you come all the way to the back of the safety deposit room, you insert the key card here. Open it up, and there's the shotgun, along with some ammo. W870. Alrighty. It should be noted that if you happen to not acquire the shotgun in the weapons locker, when you get all the way to this point, which is the beginning of the lab sequence, and you come into the security room, where these shotgun shells are, you'll also find the shotgun. Yeah. Considering I never done that, that's why I'm not showing it here. <laughs> so, I'm not sure if this is the same model as its original counterpart, but I can build it into a boomstick, kind of like the original, thanks to these custom parts that the shotgun can get. So first we've got the long barrel which is described as a custom part for the W870 that ups its max capacity to 8. Greater muzzle velocity and less spread makes each shot extra powerful. So that's handy. Then you got the shotgun stock, which stabilizes the gun, allowing it to be fired and reloaded in one smooth action. All right. So the location of the long barrel custom part for Leon's shotgun is in the Kendo gun shop when you're about to begin the sewer section with Leon. So if you go inside, over here to the left, here it is on one of the shelves. The long barrel for the W870. The shotgun stock custom part is located in the treatment pull room of the sewers inside the safe here. So if you don't know the combination of the safe, it is actually written on the side here. Left two, right 12, left eight. Solve this combination. Open the safe, and what do you know, you get the shotgun stuck. Let's start out with no parts attached. Here it is, Leon holding it and all. So, let's go ahead and test it out. No parts. All right, not bad. Now let's go ahead and combine the long barrel with it. There you go. So now it's an eight round capacity 12 gauge pump action shotgun, and that's all there is to it. So let's see what's different about it now. Obviously other than the capacity change. All right, so that was a long part, so I could actually remove that and go ahead and put the shotgun stock on it now. Huh. There you go, it's starting to look more like a full-size shotgun. Oh. Yeah, so fires it insanely faster, and the reload speed is slightly lessened. So now let's try the beast with all parts attached. This is what I would call the boomstick, but we all know it's not nearly like its original counterpart. Here's a nice detailed look of the W870 with all the custom parts equipped. Let's test it out anyway. Alright. So yeah, it is fairly disappointing that they didn't bring back the monstrous firepower, or at least the sound, <laughs> from the original Resident Evil 2, but I'm not going to complain about it. You can find the fully customized W870 in Hunk Scenario, The Fourth Survivor. You can find a slightly customized W870 shotgun as well if you play as Robert Kendo in the Ghost Survivor scenario, as you can see here. So I'm going to go ahead and test the shotgun. Let's see. Yeah, zombies are too weak for shotguns, so we're gonna test a shotgun on a liquor.
All right, so that took five shotgun shells to take down a liquor. Granted, one of those shots, he was on the roof, so that may have been a slightly greater distance from the shots. And you know shotguns, they spread, so it's possible one of the pellets missed him. Point is, took five shots from the shotgun to take him down. Now let's try it with all the parts attached. All right, so that also took five shots. So the parts, if they do up the firepower, it's just not enough to make the difference of a single shot when it comes to the liquor. But all the other tests so far that I've done involving custom parts have proved otherwise. Like the long barrel, greater muzzle velocity and less spread, it even says makes each shot extra powerful. All right, that is gonna conclude the W870 shotgun, as well as all shotguns, since there are no other shotguns. All right, now for my favorite weapon category, the Magnums. And just like the W870 shotgun, there is only one Magnum, one official Magnum, and that is the Lightning Hawk. Yet another name that is since become popular in the Resident Evil franchise. It's usually to describe a Desert Eagle type Magnum pistol. <laughs> so here's a detailed look at it. And here it is in game. So, 7 round capacity, 50 AE mag. Gas operated action, which is unusual for a semi-automatic handgun, gives it both power and accuracy. So yeah, although it's technically a magnum, it's more regarded as a magnum handgun because it's not a revolver and has all the qualities of a semi-automatic handgun. All right. So the Lightning Hawk can be found in the back of the star's office in the armory. And in order to unlock that door, you need to find the USB dongle key, which is part of the star's badge, which can be found inside of the jewelry box, which has to be unlocked using the red jewel. And to get that, you have to combine a book with the statue's arm. So to get the Lightning Hawk, it is a long process. But once you have all of that, you go to this computer, activate it, Unlock the door, and you get yourself the Lightning Hawk. Alrighty then. So the Lightning Hawk comes with its own custom parts as well, obviously, because the original had it. And I'm really, really happy they bring back the long barrel for it. I love that 10-inch Magnum from the original Resident Evil 2. But they also give you a red dot sight. So that makes things interesting. But let's check out the parts themselves. The long barrel is described as a custom part for the Lightning Hawk. This bull barrel reduces recoil and imparts extra speed to bullets, increasing damage. So yeah, just all out ups the firepower basically. And then the red dot sight, a custom part that allows for lightning fast aiming. So this, I guess, just shortens the time it takes for your crosshairs to hone in on the target. All right. So the location of one of the custom parts for the Lightning Hawk, specifically the Long Barrel, can be found at the bottom of the underground facility in the Special Weapons case. What you have to do is you need to have the STARS badge on you. Insert it. Open up this case. And here you go. Long Barrel for the Lightning Hawk. So the red dot sight custom part for the Lightning Hawk is found in Albert Wesker's desk here and only after you develop the hiding place film that is found in the upper sewer's workroom. Then you have to develop it, go into the dark room, and once you do that, you unlock the ability to inspect this desk, open it up, and then there is a wooden box. If you didn't notice, there's also an extra film in there in case you care about that. So I examine this box, and there it is, the red dot sight for the lightning hawk. So here's nice shiny look of Leon holding it. Looks awesome. It's one of the best visuals I've seen so far in this weapon review. You can find the standard Lightning Hawk also in Hunk's scenario, The Fourth Survivor, as you can see here. All right, let's give it a test run, shall we? See that, look. Look how long the cursor takes to zero in. All right. So yeah, massive recoil, even for Leon. So now let's go ahead and combine the long barrel to it. <laughs> Looking classic. Damn. All right, now let's test it out. All right, so seemingly not too much different when it comes to simply firing it. Now let's remove that custom part and attach the red dot side to it. 
<laughs> All right. So basically, it's a magnum with a scope. But yeah, look how quick that zeroes in. Much faster. All right, so that absolutely changes nothing about firing it. All it does is really change the aiming, so... Some might consider that a pointless test, but whatever. All right, so here is the full Magnum. Here's a detailed look at the Lightning Hawk with the custom parts fitted on. <laughs> Gotta love that long-ass barrel. There you go. <laughs> Looking good. Test it out. Alright, it's a beast. So being a Magnum, obviously it's better fit for more powerful enemies. So, we're definitely going to test this out on a liquor. And of course, after that, I will do my awesome Magnum tradition of taking the most powerful Magnum, which in this game is definitely this, and taking it to a standard zombie's head to watch the explosive headshot. But we'll get to that in a second. For now, let's test it on a liquor. All right, so it took three Magnum shots, and a fourth one for good measure, to take down the liquor. So a pretty powerful weapon indeed, however, that is with no parts on the gun. Now let's test it out with all the parts on it. <laughs> all right, only two shots to defeat the liquor with the parts on it. Wow, this thing is a beast. I love it. It is the hand cannon of Resident Evil 2 Remake after all. All right, now for everyone's favorite part of my weapon reviews. We are gonna test this baby on a standard zombie's head to see the explosive headshot action. Enjoy. Explosive headshot. All right, that is gonna conclude the lightning hawk. Just for good measure, I thought I would feature a double headshot. All right, so now for the more special type of weapon. First one is the chemical flamethrower. And here it is in game. An umbrella made weapon that uses pressurized gas to produce red hot flames, portable and refuelable. It's always ready for the long haul. All right. So the chemical flamethrower can be found in this room during your quest to get all the plugs. So once you acquired the king plug from the upper level, up there specifically, uh, you're gonna unlock this gate, and there it is. The chemical flamethrower. So yeah, pretty much all of the weapons that were in the original came back in this game. They made sure of that. Maybe not quite the same models of the weapons, but the same base weapons. All right. So, as you can see, this is where I say they get crazy with the custom parts because even the flamethrower in the remake has a custom part. It is known as the regulator, and it is described as a custom part for the flamethrower, restricts liquid fuel and compressed gas usage, making it possible to fire for much longer. So the location of the regulator custom part can be found in the nap room in the laboratory where you also find the upgrade ship from Wayne Lee's arm. In this room, in this specific locker, there's the regulator for the flamethrower. And it also comes with its own ammo. This was absent in the original Resident Evil 2. So this is a change. All right, so here it is, nice close up, Leon holding it. And yes, it is exclusive only to Leon scenario. So let's go ahead and test it out, I guess. <laughs> First without the regulator. I don't need to use it all up. So now let's go ahead and attach the regulator to it. Here's a detailed look of the chemical flamethrower with the regulator attached to it, although it's barely different. The only difference, if I go between the two parts, that's all that's added, this part. So that's what I should actually be focusing on in this case. Yeah, you could actually see the regulator in action. Now let's see what's different about it, now that I have that attached to it. So 
So basically, like it said, I can fire it for a little longer with that regulator attached to it. That is a great custom part to acquire. Just a quick mention, you can find the chemical flamethrower in Konjak's tofu scenario, as you can see here. Now the flamethrower, just like in the original Resident Evil 2, is the perfect weapon for those IVs. So that is what I'm gonna go ahead and test this weapon on. A little fact about these IV zombies, they are not truly dead until they are burnt to a crisp. So when this thing initially goes down, that is not the end of it. I'll know when it's truly dead. So here we go. Okay, so this right here is not dead yet. It is still not dead yet. Now it is dead. You see how it just blazed up again and now it's charred? That means it's truly dead. So. As of now, I'm at 288, and I started with 400. So that took 112 to take down the ivy plant. But that was without the regulator. So now we're gonna put the regulator on it and see how much less fuel it uses up. Okay, I got extremely lucky there. I almost died. But that also proves something else. The flames apparently do continuous damage. So the way I'm going about this test might be a little inaccurate. I should be spraying him with one flame at a time to really see how little amount of fuel you could use to really defeat these things. However, no one really has time to do little bursts like that, so I'm giving you a more basic test. Anyway, I wish I didn't reload because I sort of lost count, but considering I had 400 ammo and 400 reserve, that right number is what I had before I reloaded. So in that case, it only took 68 bursts of fuel to take down the ivy with the regulator on it. So that regulator is a lifesaver if you want to reserve fuel for the flamethrower. Alrighty then, so that's all I have to say about it. I loved that test, I almost died and I got lucky. Once in a lifetime moment there. That is gonna conclude the flamethrower. Now for the special weapon exclusive to Claire's scenario, the spark shot. And here it is in game. A high voltage gun for use on test animals. Charging takes a while and the needle's wires snap easily, but it also really packs a punch. All right, so just like the flamethrower, the spark shot can also be found on your plug quest in the same exact location. Here it is. So they changed it up just a little bit from its original counterpart. And I have to say, with the experience I got now, it is a lot better in the remake than it ever was in the original, in my opinion. In the original, its only use was against William Birkin, really. You couldn't use it against other things that well. In this game, though, it's useful for almost all enemies. But anyway, as you can see, just like the flamethrower, even the spark shot comes with a custom part. It's a high voltage condenser and it's described as a custom part for the spark shot that makes it possible to store a large amount of high voltage electricity, reducing the time between shots. All right. So just like the custom part for the flamethrower, the high voltage condenser custom part for the spark shot can also be found in the locker in the nap room. There it is, high voltage condenser for the spark shot. And then it also comes with ammo. So the spark shot is regarded as a stun gun. When I test it on enemies, you'll see why. But for now, here it is with Claire holding it. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to test it properly without an enemy, kind of like the original. In the original, you needed an enemy to see its true power. But let's see what happens if I test fire it without an enemy. So it kind of acts like a shotgun more or less, it seems. So not sure if you'll get to see what it really can do in this stage, but let's attach the high voltage condenser, see if it does anything. Here's a detailed look at the spark shot with the high voltage condenser attached to it. And once again, just like the flamethrower, it's really just the difference of a single piece like that. 
So if I focus in on that part, yeah, way different. That condenser is very noticeable on top of it. So yeah, it doesn't really change anything. I really need an enemy to test this out on. You can also find the spark shot with an abundance of ammo if you play as Flan in the Tofu Survivors, as you can see here. So I'll test it with and without the condenser. It's really difficult to choose an enemy for this weapon because in my experience, especially with a condenser, it really only takes like one hit. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and test this out on a G adult. Alright, so it took two charges of the spark shot to take down the G adult. Now, you notice that second shot, I went straight for its weak spot, the eye. That's because that is the logical thing to do. So for this weapon, I'm representing what you should be going for. Now, I did a little test off camera trying without the eye, and it took three charges for that. So it does matter if you go for the eyeball. The spark shot is really good for exposing that, so if you want, you could use other weapons to take it down. I realized upon doing this test that I can't test the spark shot with the condenser attached because I don't get the condenser until the Umbrella Lab and there are no G adults there. So what I'm gonna have to do is instead of showing damage rates, I'm just gonna have to simply show you guys the difference between without and with the condenser. So essentially, the difference that the condenser makes is the time it takes between charges. So let's see how long it takes without the condenser, even though we already did. So not too bad of a time, but it could be shorter, right? So now let's test it out with the condenser attached. And I'll do it on the buddy liquor that's around the corner. See how much less time that took? So there you go, there's the power of the condenser for you. All right, so that is really all I can show about the spark shot. It's a neat weapon to use in the remake. I like it so much better than its original counterpart. All right, that is gonna conclude the spark shot.